Hi folks, welcome back to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. The, one of the things that we can do to, to ensure that the pathway of legalization comes about, is, first of all, of course, is for the people to get on board and really support this movement because that's what we're lacking right now. Everybody out there that uses cannabis needs to be on board with the movement and all. But there's several kind of stepping stones that we have to go through in order before we get to actual legalization. And this can occur in a very short amount of time. It's not like that it has to be a long and drawn out event or anything like that. But there are several issues that we have to address before this can happen. And it has to be outright legalization. That's the only way it's going to work. The uh, just just having legal medical marijuana is not the answer. That's that's going to be, you know, I, I'm all for people using this herb for medicinal purposes and all. But the the cannabis plant does not deserve to be bastardized along with all of the narcotic prescription drugs and some of the uh, illicit alkaloids that are made in you know South American jungles and stuff. This is this is just wrong to even. To even include that in that group of, of, of substances and all. This is an herb, it's a natural plant, and it's a very safe natural herb to use. And it, it does have tremendous medicinal va values. It does have, of course, as we know, tremendous textile values in the form of hemp and, and the 50,000 products that can generate and the fuel that we could replace our foreign oil embargo that we bring into this country every day. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely insane that we're just letting this slide by. And it's all about, though, the control and the control the government has and all that. And really, our Constitution does not spell out that people cannot grow hemp or use uh, cannabis or anything like that. We All of these measures were contrived illegally. And so, and unfortunately, it has become quite a tangled mess, and it has generated a lot, a lot of problems in society and economic problems for our country, uh, military and police problems along the border, south of the border, of course, all the, you've heard about the latest uh, mutilations and the bodies that they found along north of Monterey there between the cartels and all. This is all because we have this substance illegal, and this we, we, we as a society, we can avoid all that. We're, we're better than that. We don't need to be, I mean, if you went and made water legal, illegal tomorrow, I mean, you'd be finding people with bodies stacked up on the streets of America, too, and every gang you could think of would be forming to sell water. I mean, that's, that's the idea of what happens, just like during Prohibition when they made alcohol illegal and all of that the murders and the gangs and stuff that that generated, we've done the same thing again. And decades and decades and decades and decades of this going on, the society has just come to this point where I, they, they really don't think that we can ever get to a pathway of legalization. But it can happen, and it can happen pretty easily. Now, one of the ways it could come about is if the Health and Human Services Secretary would issue a decree to the Drug Enforcement Agency to petition them to not only look at the petitions that have already been placed before them, and there are dozens of them that they just ignore, but also to get them to take uh, the Cannabis Off the Controlled Substance Act altogether. Now, uh, now we're talking about the Drug Enforcement Agency, so this is really like, you know, trying to lasso a comet with a you know a hemp rope from earth out in the atmosphere i mean it's it's about that likely that the drug enforcement agency is going to side up and finally let cannabis become legal but that's not the only pathway we can go through the president actually could release a, a an executive order that could declare that the cannabis was safe that it is removable from the controlled substance act and take it off all regulation and it could be put up on the free enterprise market like it should be and the different uh, venues, I mean, whether you're growing it, selling it, wholesaling it, whatever, the tax revenues from that would be a boon to our economy and also the jobs and, and creating jobs out there. But uh, the president could do this. It's not likely that uh, a political candidate is going to do something kind of midstream here when we have an election coming up and all, because there are a lot of people out there that have been brainwashed to believe that cannabis is dangerous and that we should have all this in place. And, you know, the gangs and the murders and all that going on as a result of that are just, you know, part of the process. They call it casualties of war, but that's really kind of uh, short-minded, if anything, and it's certainly not human. And, and if you have a heart and if you're a human being, you certainly feel for anybody that is brutalized and, and, and tortured in that way. And it's just particularly when it's unnecessary. But the one of the things that we have to clean up, though, along the way is this our commitment to this international treaty through the United Nations and the Singles Narcotics Treaty, which was 
designed in 1960 and 61 and implemented. And at the time, there were about 99 countries worldwide that participated during this treaty was adopted, and they, of course, put cannabis on there. Our, uh, you know, 10 years later, of course, we had Nixon and his Shaver Commission, which said cannabis should not be put on controlled substance, but they didn't listen. I mean, they were going to do what they wanted to do. They're, I believe they just did that to appease the public and say, oh, we're looking at it. And then all along, they knew they weren't going to, to leave it off of the Controlled Substance Act. But first of all, we have to re resign ourselves from this Singles Narcotics Treaty and this international treaty. And the provisions in the treaty are such that if the nation decides that that substance is not a problem and not a threat to their society or anything, then they have the absolute power to, to uh, back out of it. And when it comes to hemp and textile production and, and using the plant for medicinal purposes, those clauses are already written into it. So all we have to do really is just excise ourselves from this Singles Narcotics Treaty. When we signed on this treaty in 1961, of the 99 countries that were on this particular thing, 20 of them have been known enemies of ours that we've been to war with since that time. And I think it's just unfair to Americans that the rest of the world gets to control us. They get to control our drug policy and, the, and everything that goes on here. But the biggest problem is the Drug Enforcement Agency. And we have to petition to have cannabis completely removed from the Controlled Substance Act, but not through the Drug Enforcement Agency. They don't look at the petitions. There's been many. The research is there. It's, the government admitted that cannabis wasn't a gateway drug. They lied about that for years and decades just to keep the, the, the BS going for, for a long time. And so, you know, what we need to do is just as Americans, we need to demand that, this, that the president or our Congress, the Congress could actually do an amendment to the Constitution and do away with the Controlled Substance Act. But we also have the Commerce Clause, and it's, it's, that's, this is kind of how they got the hook inside the, the cannabis business in the first place was through the Commerce Clause. But we need to excise that out. All of that was derived unconstitutionally. And fortunately, we do have a constitutional process that we can get it straightened up. And it can be done in a very short time. And this doesn't have to be something that, that has to drag out for years and years. This has already been going on for decades. The pot smokers, the cannabis users, whatever you want to call us, we're not criminals. We're sick and tired of this type of legislation and being controlled like that. Our, our herb that we use is way safer than anything you have out there that's legal and definitely way safer than anything out there that's in the form of prescription drugs or anything that you're getting from a doctor. And we don't care to be included in that group. This is an herb. It's a safe herb. And we demand that these laws be taken away and they need to be done soon because Americans are sick and tired of giving all of our money to foreign, sub to foreign countries over there for this oil when we could be growing hemp and producing every bit of fuel that every plane, train, car, automobile, any running engine in the country could run on. And, it's just, and keep that money here in our country working in our economy. This is just, it's just beyond, even if you don't smoke cannabis, you know the, that it's never killed anybody. You know that nobody's ever overdosed from it. You can't say that about your cigarettes or your alcohol or your prescription drugs. And God knows a thousand other substances out there that are legal. So let's stop this ridiculousness. Let's get this pathway done. We can do it very quickly. It's just a matter of an executive order or the Congress coming together and saying, hey, it's time to do this. And the only way the Congress is going to get the lead out of their you-know-what is if you, the people out there, light a fire under them. We need to bombard them, and I mean seriously bombard them, not just, you know, when you think about it. Make it a daily point to, to send your congressmen and your senators in your area, state, local, all the way to the top, and let them know that you're sick and tired of cannabis being illegal, and you demand that it be taken off the Controlled Substance Act and put on the free enterprise market. That way the people who do want to use it for medicinal purposes, they'll have easy access to go to stores that sell it. The states, the, the, all the different entities that sell it and produce it and grow it and process it, they can all generate sales tax revenues, which will help not only generate jobs, help our economy, help our education systems, and all these things that we're having to cut because we have a crooked government working up there and spending all the money that they're borrowing from China. This is unnecessary. We, we can generate a trillion and a half dollar industry right here in America, and that would have a tenfold effect in what it could bring back to the country. And, and also, we don't have to worry about our children getting a hold of pot. Now, come on. 
It's the safest thing out there. If your kids get a hold of anything, you better beg that it's pot and not some dangerous prescription drug or worse, alcohol and cigarettes. So get on the board, America. It doesn't matter if you use cannabis or not. This is the right thing to do. Let's stop the murders. Let's stop the gang violence. Let's stop all the incarceration of innocent people, citizens just like you that aren't criminals just because they choose to use a safe herb. Let's stop all of this. Let's take this away from the government and restore our constitutional freedoms that were set down by our forefathers who not only grew hemp, but they smoked hemp and used it. And they didn't have a crime problem back then. And the only reason that we have the violence and stuff going on now is because we we have made a substance illegal that the crime wave out there can jump on and they're ruthless. They don't care about how many people they murder. They could care less. We need to stop that. Get on board with us. Pester your senators. Pester the president. Demand that, that, that this happens and we can do it very soon. This could happen before this year is out if we all got together and really put our efforts into it. I thank you for joining the Candidates Corner.